everyone and welcome to the Sustainable Tourism Toolkit webinar series. It's so good to speak to you today. My name is Nick Cooper from the Tourism Collective and we're delivering this webinar on behalf of the Australian government. I specialise in sustainable tourism and I also run an eco-tourism small business on the Mornington Peninsula which has been built to have a strong sustainability ethos and I'll be referring to that a couple of times uh, during these webinars. This is the final webinar, webinar four of a four-part webinar series um, and today we're going to be covering creating positive social impact and promoting your sustainability story. The webinar series has been developed as part of the National Sustainability Framework and the purpose of these webinars is to run you through the key topics of the Sustainable Tourism Toolkit at a high level. The webinars feature examples of tourism businesses, um, both here in Australia and further afield, taking sustainable actions to inspire your own thinking. This toolkit is a new resource published at the end of last year. It's a free how-to guide containing practical advice to help Australian tourism businesses become more sustainable, and it's mainly aimed at SMEs. Before we go any further, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians on the land I'm speaking from today and the place I call home, the Mornington Peninsula. Uh, I acknowledge the Bunurong, Boonurong people of the Kulin Nation uh, who have cared for these waters and lands for millennia. I would pay my respects to elders past and present and extend those respects to the First Nations country and people from where you are tuning on in from today. A bit of housekeeping, so my colleague Rebecca White uh, from the Tourism Collective, she's also on this call and she'll be on the uh, chat box to today and she'll be sharing links that we'll be mentioning throughout this webinar. The webinar is going to be recorded and um, everybody is uh, muted on this webinar, so if you do have any questions, there is a questions box that you can type in questions from there, which um, Beck will be monitoring. And then at the end of the webinar today, we'll have around 10 minutes. Um, so Beck and I will do our best to, to answer those questions we've not been able to cover during the webinar. So I'm going to uh, turn off my camera now so you guys can focus in on the slides and then we'll jump straight into today's webinar. The toolkit um, is part of a training activation program to help the industry become more sustainable. And it's a true national commitment and joint initiative between Austrade, Tourism Australia, and the state and uh, tourism organizations. The toolkit is a national resource for all businesses. However, there are also many great additional sustainability resources available from each of the STOs and Tourism Australia, which may, um, relate to some of the pillars that are in the toolkit. So we encourage you to check out uh, these. So what are we going to run through today? We're going to do a quick overview of the toolkit for those that may be joining this for the first time. Then we're going to be jumping into chapter four and unpacking that. That's all about creating positive social impact. We'll then be going into chapter five and looking at promoting your sustainability story with lots of great examples from there and then giving some ideas for taking action in your own business. So just a quick recap of the toolkit. The National Sustainability Framework for the Visitor Economy and the Sustainable Tourism Toolkit is a key deliverable of Australia's National Tourism Strategy Thrive 2030. The Sustainable Tourism Toolkit is the how of that framework and strategy. It's the how to show tourism operators how to implement sustainable tourism practices in their business. And this toolkit comes in two versions. It comes in a downloadable PDF version, which is really detailed and helps you really dive into all aspects of operating sustainability um, in your business. And then there's a online version, which is a shorter, I guess, bite-sized uh, version. And Beck will be putting a link to both of these versions in the chat box for you to, to have if you haven't already. So how to use the toolkit. Uh, the toolkit sets out practical advice, guidance and actions your business can take to improve your practices across the four pillars of sustainability. A really, really great tip is to use this toolkit as, as like a toolbox, jumping into it to find the tool that you need 
for that particular aspect of your business. And it has great advice in there for all levels of businesses that are across the sustainability journey from beginner right through to advance. So in each section, you're gonna be um, seeing a topic introduction. Um, you're gonna be seeing key terms in there and links to different sources. There's a glossary um, in the toolkit too, explaining the different terms that are mentioned. And then at the end of each uh, topic, there's first steps and next step actions, giving uh, indications and ideas of uh, what steps you can take in your business to achieve some of the uh, pillars and sustainability actions mentioned in the toolkit. This, uh, we've been going through the last uh, three weeks or so, the, the webinar of this series. Um, and this goes through the five different chapters of the Sustainable Tourism Toolkit. As I mentioned, today is webinar uh, four of four. And um, all of these webinars have been recorded and the replays are available and going to be emailed out to everyone. So webinar one uh, or chapter one was taking a managed approach, chapter two with environmental and climate action, chapter three was respecting culture. And today we're gonna be talking about chapter four and five. Chapter four is creating positive social impact and chapter five is promoting your sustainability story. There's a QR code linking to that on your screen. And as I say, Beck will be sharing it as well. But we highly encourage you to go back and watch the webinars from module one, two and three. Watch those replays if you've missed them. Um, and uh, they're really great resources and kind of sets everything up to, for what we're talking about today. So before we go through any further, um, we're going to ask you a quick question. Um, and this is, a, I guess, a, a double question. It's asking how confident do you currently feel in creating positive social impact and communicating your sustainability journey in your business? So if you scan that QR code with your phone, that'll take you through to a multiple choice survey. And that's um, be great if you can start answering that. And Beck, if you see them come through, it'd be great if you can just give me an indication of um, those coming yep, through. Yep, they're coming through, which is great. Thank you, Nick. So I'll just leave that there for another moment. And I've also just popped the link uh, to it as well, if you prefer to do it on your desktop um, as well. All right, Beautiful. I'll let you move on, Nick. Thank you. And these surveys are really, really useful for us just to see where, where you are and um, you know how we can potentially help in the future too. So. Let's jump into chapter four of the toolkit, creating positive social impact. And your business can be a force for good in your community. How you operate your business can create positive impacts beyond the services and experiences you deliver to visitors. So some of the key topics we'll be covering uh, today is about building strong relationships with your community, that social license, providing inclusive and accessible experiences and services, supporting inclusive employment and providing great working conditions and reviewing your supply chain to minimize environmental impacts and strengthen community relationships. The question you might ask is why create positive social impact and regardless of the size of your business your impact can stretch much further than your employees and customers. So creating positive social impact can strengthen the reputation and brand of your business and your community. It can increase staff retention and appeal of the business when recruiting new staff members. It can reduce stress and absenteeism amongst your team members. It can enhance efficiencies, create competitive advantage and increase customer willingness to choose your business due to shared values and ethical practices. So you can create trust, well-being, and community support for your business by actively working with and con contributing to your community. There are lots of different ways you can measure your social impact in your business. And there are some ideas and different measures shared in the toolkit. So in the PDF version of the toolkit on page 60, appendix two, there is um, some examples on there and those examples include how you can benefit communities through um, goods and services locally through employment of locals through supporting community needs improving community sentiment and then some examples from inclusiveness of accessibility and inclusiveness for your customers so utilize the appendix in the, the toolkit to really help guide you on that 
we are all part of the tourism community. So being an active in, and engaged member of your tourism network is really important. So look to work with local or regional tourism organizations. Consider becoming a member of your local chamber of commerce or tourism industry council and support advocacy to dis demonstrate positive impacts for local community. Another way um, that you can contribute to community is through collaborations with local organisations, including voluntary, sporting and conservation groups or cultural institutions. The focus here is all about embedding your business in your, in your community. At Wild Adventures Melbourne, the ecotourism company I run on the Mornington Peninsula, we formed the WAM4 project. And that was a dedicated project to specifically support local community groups and causes. So we did everything from the picture on your screen, from there collaborating with local beach clean groups and offering uh, free stand-up paddleboard lessons to the community. So they got a great stand-up paddleboard experience, but then got to beach clean at the same time. To linking in with First Nations organizations that we support, to supporting reforestation projects, um, even looking at supporting marine and wildlife conservation groups and community events and causes. Providing employment and skills development opportunities for local people not only bolsters the community's economic well-being, but can also establish a sense of pride and ownership in the success of your business. Here's an example from Hamlet Cafe in Hobart who um, provide employment and training opportunities to those underrepresented in the workforce. And you can see a quote on the screen there of um, how customers have really enjoyed that experience and actually ended up going back more than once um, during their visit in Hobart because they loved the not only the service, but also the cause it was giving. A quote from the owner of that cafe, Emma Briffer, says she loves the idea that you could allow people to create social change without actually changing their daily routine. So really infusing um, a great cause into a product that, that everyone needs. Um, they even, Hamlet even, pr provides some of the staff their training to Mona to um, work with Mona owner as well so a great co collaboration opportunity too. Reviewing the impact your business has on the community so for example thinking about your visitors impact on the surrounding areas so do your visitors coming to your business do they shop locally do they eat at local restaurants uh, does visitor traffic create congestion or parking problems at busy times and therefore has a negative impact on the community uh, because of that so how can you um, review that impact of your community and how can you take actions uh, to support the community. The example on your screen is from Reflections Holiday Parks um, based over in New South Wales and they're a social enterprise who aim to support community in multiple ways. What they've done really well is that they partnered with ATDW um, to bring local business listings to the fingertips of their guests. So when you go onto their website, they've got a what's local section and they really highlight some of the great local eateries and activities and experiences that people can do uh, going on there. So really highlighting how people can support local and uh, get involved with local whilst they're there. As I mentioned, supporting local clubs and not-for-profit organisations um, is a great thing for you to do to support your community um, and there might be anything from sponsoring the local junior footy team to identifying a local charity which benefits by receiving a donation from a proportion of your bookings. This can be a really great way to generate additional funds for a cause that's important to your, you and your business without having to solely put those funds in from your business itself. Um, Pepper's Silo Hotel in Launceston in Tasmania, they've got uh, QR codes across the property and even donate um, boxes that you can tap your card on where um, it just gives the customer the choice to, to donate and um, support a local cause that, that they're passionate about too. So giving the customer the choice um, and supporting a local project um, or group or or community organization is, is a really uh, nice thing you can generate funds for through your business. This, uh, we're actually gonna go international now and show an example of um, a regenerative boutique hotel in Mexico called Playa Viva. And they um, 
have uh, multiple ways of supporting the community. They actually have a 2% fee that they include in the bill. So they've incorporated it into their pricing um, for all guests. And that funds health, education and economic opportunities to people in the local communities. So everything from turtle sanctuaries to education to health to economic opportunity as well. So they've looked to incorporate that and generate funds from incorporating that into their pricing model, which can be a really nice way of supporting a local project. Your community and customers are made up of a lot of uh, people from different backgrounds with different life experiences, skills and abilities. So taking action to meet the needs of your customers and your, your employees will support the long-term success of your business. There's been some really interesting research that people with accessibility needs make up a large portion of the, your potential customer base. So Tourism Australia's Future of Tourism demand research of uh, 2022 found that around one in four visitors to Australia had some sort of accessibility need. But bear in mind these customers are a much larger group than people with a visible physical disability. They can also include people with sight, hearing and cognitive impairments that may not be readily obvious. Other potential customers with accessibility needs include older people and parents with young children. So making your venue and experience accessible demonstrates to both customers and the community your commitment to be in that space. There's um, some ways that you can make your tourism business more accessible, which are shared in the toolkit here, such as ensuring your website and your social posts are accessible. That can be on your website, um, on your images from there, adding alt text onto those images. So if someone's looking at your website with a screen reader, they know what's going on in those images. Providing information on your website, in your venue and in person on accessibility. Considering offering accessible specific products and services. Uh, communicating, being inclusive and welcoming to everyone. And being inclusive includes food and beverage. So that can be catering for dietary requirements. It can also be, you know, having non-alcoholic options, um, that sort of thing too. And, um, you know, providing that accessible information and communication, you can get some really good ideas of how to do that out there. So hosting with heart, are the world's first directory of holiday properties that are committed to inclusivity, accessibility and sustainability. And what they do really well is they give lots of different types of accessibility needs in their filters. So um, it's just a really good example of going on there and you can filter by sustainability features or accessibility features too. But what it does really well is um, it just shows you the different types of accessibility needs that might be needed across those properties and then shows properties that actually cater for them in a really great and unique way. Here are some examples of operators here in Australia. Um, Global Ballooning in Victoria back in 2012 they actually um, adapted one of their ballooning, air ballooning baskets to uh, have an easy access basket. So someone um, in a wheelchair could actually head up into the skies in those balloons. Port Arthur historic site in Tasmania. They have courtesy buggies and wheelchairs on site for visitors with limited mobility. They also have visitor guides in five different languages to program. And that allow people of all abilities from low vision, low mobility and cognitive needs to connect with the joy of walking in nature. And actually won some uh, tourism awards in, in hiking as well. So making their products as accessible as possible. Part of your community are your employees. So we know how tough it has been in terms of staffing the last few um, years and it's still the case in many places in terms of staffing. So is there a way you can look after your staff beyond the norm, which can help you retain staff, boost morale and well-being amongst your team? Um, this can range from who you're employing, so you have a wide range of people from different backgrounds, um, wages that are above the industry um, average, flexible working hours, especially for you know potentially mums working with you with kids, alternative public holiday days off, such as um, uh, yes, public days off, maternity, paternity cover, that sort of thing too. 
the example on your screen at the moment is from Intrepid, who um, have a sort of supporting families at Intrepid um, program and staff rewards and benefits. I guess it's important to note that Intrepid are a global company. So while 10 weeks paid parental leave doesn't seem um, like a lot in Australia, it's significant ac across other countries in the world. Another example I heard the other day was I met um, a guy who um, used to own Mountain Goat Brewery and they used to incentivize staff to ride a push bike to work. So um, just a cool way to invite, in, incentivize staff to, um, to do something good and, um, and give back at the same time. And another really important factor is uh, supply and chain management. Um, so just to confirm what your supply chain is, your supply chain is um, all of the individuals, organizations, resources, activities and technology involved in the creation and sale of your product, service or experience. So that can be anything from, you know, the food providers that you have to the, the sunscreen you use for your guests to your bathroom amenities to lots of different areas. And visitors are becoming increasingly aware of their environmental and social impacts. And as a result, they are more conscious of how to spend their money while traveling. So it's crucial to have a good understanding of your supply chain and its impacts. And I guess these are questions that are really good to ask your employees. So, uh, sorry, to ask your supply chain. So asking your supply chain, those providers that provide that are asking them, what are their sustainability commitments and policies? What action are they taking to reduce the negative environmental and social impacts? And what is their carbon footprint? And are they taking steps to measure their footprint too? Crystal Brook Hotels um, is, a, is a really good example. So looking to examine your supply chain and purchasing arrangements can help decrease risk, save you money, and minimize environmental impact, as well as strengthening community relationships. Crystal Brook, their staff uniforms are from sustainable brands. They've even partnered with a dress hire company. So um, they're encouraging guests and providing links on their website. So rather than um, buying a new holiday outfit, they um, can hire a new holiday outfit too. So just uh, ideas of, of how they can check their supply chain and make sure it's as authentic as possible. Red Gun Barbecue um, are Australia's only certified B Corp restaurant. What they do really, really well is they prioritise supporting local for the produce that they provide um, in their restaurant and farmers, um, they always prioritize farmers with ethical farming practices too. They also communicate that really well, such as the graphic of how much support to the local economy they've done, which they feature on their website too. So now we're gonna jump into chapter five of the toolkit, which is all about promoting your sustainability story. And this is um, such an important area and one of the most common um, common things we talk about with operators when we run these workshops across different parts of uh, Australia is that they're doing um, amazing stuff in sustainability but aren't necessarily communicating it or don't don't really know how to either so um, this this area is really really crucial so talking about your sustainability achievements with your customers and community can establish a competitive advantage where your sustainable practices become a point of difference. Communicating about sustainability also helps your employees, customers and wider community understand your values so that you can work collectively towards common goals. So we'll talk a little bit here about the importance of making truthful and accurate claims, promoting your sustainability actions across the visitor journey and getting your staff involved too. So why communicate your sustainability journey? Well, firstly, um, it's about building trust with your customers and staff, about creating buy-in among staff who deliver the sustainable actions. It helps you differenti differentiate your business in a competitive market. It can help attract more customers um, and it demonstrates your commitment to responsible business practices. 
So while it can actually feel quite daunting at first, we really do encourage you to communicate all the great sustainable positive stuff that you're doing. Show you are on the journey and it is actually a strength to be authentic and transparent um, and your customers can really relate to that and uh, makes you really authentic in what you're doing. Sustainability is not something to be buried away on a website. It should be a key part of your ongoing marketing and communications. You can show your sustainability eff efforts on each sustainability pillar and through all parts of the customer journey. This is a graph um, that is contained in the toolkit and it features um, how you can promote your actions across the visitor journey. So starting at the top there, you've got dreaming. So using images on your social media to make your sustainable actions aspirational. You've then got planning. So having accurate information on your website backed up with evidence so your potential visitors can see the action you are taking. You've then got booking if you have data on how much you have saved with your sustainability actions. This is a great place to include it. Alternatively, think about using sustainability messages after they book. So for example, when someone's booked with you, you could request that they bring refillable water bottles or a reusable coffee cup. You've then got experience. So from the moment you greet your visitors through to the farewell, you have plenty of opportunities to engage them with your sustainability storytelling. And remember, whether it's your team talking about initiatives or signage through your experience, it needs to be backed up with data. So sharing is about picking up where your visitors are sharing or talking about sustainability in online reviews um, and engage in that cost of, uh, conversation. So for example, with Wild Adventures Melbourne, about 75% of our online reviews mention our sustainability practices. And it's great to engage with that and reply to that as well. That can lead to um, maintaining conversations and even incentivizing repeat visits or um, those people start becoming real advocates for your business and encourage others to travel more via word of mouth. Another really key tip is to infuse sustainability across your whole website. So rather than just having a sustainability page on your website or section, trying to infuse it on there because not everybody is going to be going onto that sustainability page. So for your website, as a minimum, Think about including a copy of your sustainability policy or commitment, um, include any certifications or sustainability chain, uh, training that you've undertaken, and have a summary in there of the actions you have undertaken and plan to introduce. It can be useful to list these under the four pillars identified in this toolkit. This is an example of Capital Brewing Co. in, um, in Canberra. And what they do really well is that they talk about how, um, you know, with not so many words, with more images and headlines and things, what their commitment to positive impact is. So everything from reducing water to tackling waste, um, putting some facts and figures in there to how they're tackling greenhouse gas emissions, to how they're trying to be energy efficient, to how they're planting uh, trees too. So lots of different ways that they are doing it but they're communicating it in a really visual way that lets people kind of understand that and then when you are making progress report on how you are going being transparent and using um, you know specific dates and numbers this graphic you can see on your screen is from West Beach Parks in Adelaide in their 2022 to 2025 sustainability plan and they've really made that really visual, got some really impactful figures on the um, positive impact that they're having, um, got lots of icons there as well. So again, being transparent and showing their customers, this, these are the great things we're doing. And we've made this in a really easy, digestible way for people to, to see, understand, and um, you know, really get behind us as a business. As we covered back in module one, accreditations are a valuable external validation of your sustainability actions. So if you have accreditations, share them across all your touch points like your website um, and on your, in your venue as well. Also look to share your commitment to sustainability on key visitor touch points. Um, so this is from Grampians Peaks Walking Company who share um, their commitment to sustainability um, over there. These are you know, quick wins that you can do for your website. 
Embedding sustainability across all your communications and products um, can be done in a number of ways. We thought we'd show you this option. Um, this is Potato Head, which is an accommodation and um, restaurant and bar in Bali. Um, and they do some incredible, they're a certified B Corp and they do some incredible initiatives tackling all sorts of um, sustainability and plastic waste is a huge issue in Bali and they've, they've actually got a plastic waste workshop that customers can get involved into. Um, they show guests how they can give back on their website by communicating that. They even offer activities so um, everything from, um, you know, heading out onto the waterway and cleaning up rubbish to, as I say, learning how to make things out of plastic waste and things as well. So they just communicated it in a really well. So check out um, Potato Head's website and it just shows um, how they've managed to do that and show their commitment to sustainability. There are likely behind the scenes business operators that visitors may not see. So there might be stuff that you're doing behind the scenes that you're not currently communicating. And it's really important. It can actually be um, a real positive, enticing thing for customers to communicate what you're doing behind the scenes. This is the Cattle Shed, um, a key event venue in the Grampians in Victoria. And what they do is they show how they're um, recycling their grown flowers through drying them out, through growing cuttings um, and sharing with staff and things like that. They're doing social posts about that and going, this isn't all going to waste. This is actually what we're doing behind the scenes. Another product in the Grampians is the Royal Mail Hotel, um, who actually have a conservation project as well. Um, and they, a few years ago, they, they successfully breeded spotted quolls and that actually made international headlines. So actually brought a um, spotlight on their business for doing great stuff and actually just show people that there's a great hotel that's actually doing great things um, in conservation as well. So do, bringing your um, indirect sustainability stories to telling your guests about them um, can be a really strength for your business to do. So a question to ask yourself is, can you create any sustainable actions and products for your guests to experience? Um, this is an example from Curtin Spring Stations in the Northern Territory, which is a cattle station with an inn. They run guided walks and they make paper from native grasses. But they actually run uh, paper making workshops where visitors can go in, they can learn about sustainable paper making, uh, try making it themselves, and then even take home a memento. So they're, they're got a real great sustainable practice in making um, paper from native grasses, but they also show, turn that into an experience for their customers um, who can get a great experience from there. So untamed escapes in South Australia have done this really, really well too. They've created a voluntourism tour that which um, contributes to the conservation of, um, of koalas uh, at the Makira station. Um, they've even partnered with Kangaroo Island Passport to Recovery Program. That program um, encourages visitors to take part in citizen science um, when they visit uh, Kangaroo Island as well. So Untamed Escapes have partnered with that program um, as part of it too. If uh, a really strong way to get your communications out there is to get your staff involved as well. So if you have a team, how can you empower staff to support your sustainability actions and communications? Uh, we, this is an example from Hyatt Hotels, but the Hyatt brand magnify their impact by having a global month of service where Hyatt staff around the world give back locally, supporting education, career readiness, well-being, and environmental conservation projects. So some ways um, to engage your staff include, you know, running a staff training program to explain what sustainability is and why it is important to your business, including sustainability in your internal newsletter, adding sustainability updates to your staff meetings, and even looking to develop a green team, which is a great way of building staff engagement, thinking of creative new actions and championing action and engagement across your organization. When promoting your sustainability efforts, honesty and accuracy are super important. So to make truthful claims, refer to your sustainability action plan and action you are measuring. 
So have a look at chapter one, taking a managed approach for um, some more information on this, but identifying practices and policies that show you are taking action. Talk about what you do, but do not exaggerate the impact of your actions. So before you start promoting your sustainability, sustainable business, it's really important that all your sustainability claims are honest and accurate. To make truthful claims, start by undertaking an assessment of your business across the environmental, cultural, and community aspects of sustainability. Um, that can include reducing energy consumption, uh, conserving water, managing waste, respecting culture, supporting and working with your community, uh, and having accessibility options. Look to measure and keep uh, a record of your sustainability progress, and of course, having a sustainability action plan. Here are some communication principles to also follow. So avoid using broad and unqualified claims. Um, have evidence in your sustainability actions and be clear on conditions or qualifications. Be transparent about your sustainability transition and ongoing commitments. Um, so for example, if you're transitioning away from you know, plastic products to another one, then you know, be transparent and, and show that you're doing that. Avoid using visual elements, um, pictures, logos, packaging, or other imagery, and don't leave out or hide important information. Use clear, simple, and easy to read language. Under Australian consumer law, all businesses have obligations to comply with when making environmental and sustainability claims. And two real key points, and we hear these a lot in the workshops that we run, uh, is you know greenwashing and green hushing, and almost a fear of falling into either of those areas as well. So greenwashing is making unsubstantiated or misleading claims about the environmental benefits of a product, service, and company. And that can happen in a number of ways. Green hushing is staying silent about genuine sustainability achievements, often due to fear of criticism for not doing enough. So there's things that companies need to think about. Um, if they make a claim, can they prove it to be 100% uh, true 100% of the time? If the claim is true, does it really matter? Is it a really, really significant action? Is the problem being avoided really important? Are there any other negative issues being overlooked? And are claims backed up by solid evidence? So as you can see, sustainability storytelling is a big topic and there is so much to learn, as well as all the practical advice in the toolkit. Um, there's actually a resource from Tourism Australia who created a sustainability storytelling guide. Beck will be providing a, a link for that one and there's also a QR code to scan on your, your, your screen. And this was created by Tourism Australia and EarthCheck who were also created the Sustainable Tourism Toolkit. And it's an additional resource to show tourism and hospitality businesses what accurate and truthful communication looks like. Australian consumer law came into being in 2023 which requires businesses to comply with when making environmental and sustainability claims. So really practical advice is important to follow to make sure we are all doing the right thing in our businesses and avoiding greenwashing. If you are on the early stages of your sustainability journey and don't have external accreditations verifying your specific sustainability results in your business, this is also an important read to go through that sustainability storytelling um, document and that can help help you make sure you are making accurate and truthful claims. As I say, Beck will share a link to this one. So let's look at the next steps um, for your business. When it comes to taking action in your business, we recommend that you have a look at pages um, 49 for creating positive social impact and uh, 57 for promoting your sustainability um, story. And these have fantastic summaries of the first steps and second step ideas to consider for your business to progress um, creating positive social impact and promoting your sustainability story. So we really do recommend you have a look at these lists and see what is most relevant for your businesses 
Um, they've even got sort of um, you know rough cost indications in terms of whether they were low, medium, or higher cost, um, and then work out what you can put into action across your business. So your next steps as a business is to use the toolkit chapter four, creating positive social impact um, for actions to become a force for good in your community. And then also using chapter five, promoting your sustainability story to review your approach to communicating your sustainable tourism practices across the visitor journey. Also, we encourage watching um, webinars one, two and three for a, a recap on the other pillars and using the first steps and next steps checklist across all of the pillars to help you guide, budget and prioritise your action. Um, we really encourage you to you know, share the replays of these webinars um, with colleagues um, to kind of have a look back through and if you haven't watched any of them already, encourage you to go back and, and check those different ones out. All of those webinars will um, be available to watch back um, on the, and they'll be available on the Austrade YouTube channel from next week. Next week. So um, that concludes this four-part webinar series on the Sustainable Tourism Toolkit. We really do thank you for for joining, um, and you know, hope you find a lot of value utilizing the toolkit to progress your your business on your sustainability journey. Uh, if you have any questions on the toolkit email the visitor economy team. The email is on the screen there, visitoreconomy at austrade.gov.au. Um, you know, look to sign up to the visitor economy e-news as well. Um, Beck's gonna provide a link in the chat box to that. And that provides the latest news on tourism policies, programs, research, and broader Australian government programs to support the visitor economy. Beck, on behalf of Beck and myself, um, we wish you all the best with your future endeavours, um, especially as the sustainable tourism business um, in Australia. And um, we really look forward to seeing you, you grow and uh, lead the way and help Australia reach its vision of becoming a global leader in sustainable tourism. Thank you so much for taking part. Please, um, you know, utilise the toolkit for, for all it's worth and the webinars and everything. And um, yeah, we, we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much, everyone. Take care.